Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing a little bit more with the SE350 which is the Lenovo Edge server and um, well I never make mistakes never ever ever so I will start by um, addressing some of the stuff that you might have heard wrong yeah you have heard some stuff wrong <laughs> uh, I kind of said that this um, had a starting price of about <sighs> Did I say $2,000? Well, of course you heard that wrong because it's only about $1,250. I actually found it at Lenovo's um, own page and they're giving some really good discounts. So $1,250 for the absolute minimum version of this and then you build on top of that and before you have blinked, you're over $2,000. But well, never mind. it has a starting point that is considerably lower than what you heard. <laughs> oh crap, but let's go see some other stuff that you might have heard wrong. <laughs> so right now I have it powered on, but it's not on. Well, it's it's powered, but it's not powered on. Can you see that? You probably can. So you open here and push this back. And <clears throat> you heard me say that this switch over here was um, to monitor the LED coming off. and. Well, you can configure it so that if the LED comes off, well, the switch will activate and then it will tell the server to lock down. You heard wrong. This is the Kingston tongue. Am I saying that right? Or uh, I mean, are you hearing that right? Kingston tongue lock. So you can plug that in the side here and lock the server into place. And if that for some reason comes out, that switch will activate. Uh, the other thing that you heard me talk about is this one there is a press button switch down here that you can press and that is the one that um, is monitoring the led i am told so yep you um, you heard wrong there as well and someone of course asked about this wrench that is located right oh now it's ramping up it must be feeling that i have the lid off and want to make sure that everything is cool so Stop it, you're making noises. We are recording video. Turn down your fans. Okay, back to the wrench. Oh, rather irritating. The wrench is for moving the antennas from the back and to the front. The, the wrench is for moving the antennas from the back and to the front. Let's get that bloody light on again. This is... Um, Okay, now it's powering down again. That took a little bit. So, also I got a lot of questions about how much power this uses. So, I've hooked it up to a power meter. This is uh, 226 volts, 0.25 amps and about 30 something watts. There we are. Right now it's using 28 point, well, just below 30 watts. It's off. That is actually a quite a bit of power for not doing anything at all. It does have the management module on, so I would be able to go in and, and manage the server and do a lot of configuration and stuff on it. Even though the workhorse of a server is not on, I would be able to do that. So um, let's power the thing and see what it uses then. Powering up. And yeah, it's there's eighty five watts ish. Over a hundred down to about ninety three, ninety four. Okay. I wanna go into the bias. CPU is available in three different models for this, the D2123 and the 43 and the 83, I think it was. And that is four cores, eight cores and 16 cores. This is the eight core version. So here we are in the BIOS and um, let's just go over some of the stuff that we get in here. Uh, first we get a summary of what 
what is going on here? We have the Wi-Fi version. There we have the, well, we are on a Think system, SE350. You might not think that's important to know that right there, but, but if you're on the server from a remote location, it's actually really helpful that at least know that you're on the right system. And then of course you have the model number down here, or um, yeah, 7D1X. Um, yeah, you need to be hardcore to uh, to know that serial number of the of the device, and then a unique ID and some Linux drivers and some Windows drivers. Uh, these I believe is onboard packages that you can go and update. One CPU present, and that's this one running at 2.2 gigahertz and maximum frequency 4 gigahertz that's a lot skylake processor 32 gigs of memory apparently it's kingston ram that is in here so there is that then we have some pci devices pci device information there's two and uh, we have um well we have the boot device the m.2 with mirroring enablement kit uh, so we are booting on that and then we have the MBME slot with another two. I am not seeing that Wi-Fi slash LTE attachment anywhere. I'm a bit worried about that, but never mind. Then we have RAID configuration. We can see the disks that we have in here. Can't do much, but we can do a little bit. Right now, manage disk drives. Yeah, we have operating system installation. I tried that last time. Uh, didn't have that much luck with it. Firmware, you can, um, well, if you want to update your firmware, you can put in a USB stick and, and have some firmware on that and you can update the firmware. Uh, there are better ways to do that, of course, but yeah. Then we have UEFI settings and there are a lot of settings here. And if we go into system settings, well, there's even more settings that we can set here, all kind of weird stuff devices and io let's check that we can enable stuff there is the onboard uh, video device mm -hmm. yeah um you can actually add in a video card in the tiny server and go and, and use that instead but right now it's on the onboard video card there is also if for security reasons you have those usb ports on the front and on the back and you if if this server is high security and in a location where it's vulnerable well you might want to go and disable those then we have some cloning you can do something with the drives copy the settings and the rate configuration and the bmc settings and you can import them as well i don't know if anyone is going to be using that uh, diagnostics run the diagnostics collect service data Often, if there's something wrong with a server, um, Lenovo might ask you to collect the service data if the server is working well enough so that you can actually go in and collect the service data. And that will um, collect a lot of data and, and then I don't know if it, if it sends it to Lenovo or if it just asks us to save it on a USB stick. That was stupid. Now I have to wait for several minutes. Okay, be right back. Okay, it completed that and asked us where we want to save it. So next, and we can save it to uh, somewhere if we uh, if we had somewhere to save it. Um, we put in a USB device. Maybe it will pop up there. Try to look for something. Yeah, we have a USB device that we can save it on. We only have that one. So now let's just save that. Oh, okay. It needs to be fat. And the one that I just put in is 16 gigabytes, so it's definitely not so. Cancel that. Never mind. Go back. Forget about it. <clears throat> That's about it. Let's uh, boot the server. And we started server 2019. I don't know this flickering thing that is going over the screen. That's not on the screen. It's um, still there. Yeah, I don't see that. The camera sees it. I um, installed a little performance program, the, the pass mark test here, and we can just run this only the CPU stuff. The rest of the server is, well, the graphics and stuff, it's, it's not that quick. So let's just run all the CPU stuff. It's a server, it doesn't really have a graphics card that is meant to do anything meaningful 
and with a VDA connection at the back. Well, it's not interesting at all. Let's see what this ends up to be. And there we have it. Um, overall score. 13,192 and here is all the different results uh, CPU single threaded 1689 um, so yeah it's a decent CPU so people like to see this Cinebench um, I only have the older one I should probably get the 19 version but let's uh, let's run this you can kind of see over here I have already run it I, I ran it last week and it performed like 1161 uh, that's one cpu if you have a pair of intel xeon x 5650s well they do a little bit better about 100 points faster than this um, but that's two cpus and this is just one cpu and uh, yeah let's see um, i would very much expect that it's about the same this time actually a tiny bit lower but well within the margin of error so cool okay i know you you're a curious dude right now the server just in server 2019 is using about 70 watts going up and down 68 watts right now so let's make it do something test the cpu so right now it's um probably working full speed on that so it goes up ah, and then it changes there are 126 7 watts ish so and it's ramping up the fans it's getting busy so the server uses about 128 watts at full load okay so this is the computer in the living room because um, if you want to enable the wi-fi and the lte you have to go and do that through the x clarity controller or there is um well there they have an API that you can use as well but we uh, log in here and I have been on here uh, it actually comes and asks me to change the password when I log in here the first time I did that so it's not the standard password and this is the clarity controller and it looks very much normal so far but it has edge networking down here and if we click that there are some new options um, it complains about something that I've changed up here that I should make a backup of and, and save somewhere safely. Uh, I am not entirely sure what that is. Um, it's device network terminology. It has some standard sets, some presets that you can set, custom configuration, but there's a lot of and it changes something down here. I don't think we need to mess with that. But if we go further down, we can see that there is a Wi-Fi connection here, which is right now it is actually disabled. I have to press here to enable it. But before I do that, I, um, I have the option of configuring my if it's a client or if it's an access point and set an SSID encryption. Um, put some kind of encryption on there. Probably not the worst idea. And also if want to enable the LTE down here. It would of course need a SIM card to do that, but if I enable that, it should show up on the system. Should we just try and put in a SIM card? We could actually do that. Okay, I have the tiniest little SIM card here from Tree. And I pop this up, and I do believe that that goes in just about that way. So, okay, this pops up like that. And we take the tiny little SIM card. Put it there. Put it up here. Oh, it's too big. No, it's alright. I'll just. Yeah. Okay. It's in. Can you see that? Did I zoom in enough? There. Put the LED back on. And turning off the server meant that I lost connection to the um, XCC. And welcome to my gaming channel, waiting for the XCC to, uh, yeah, to be ready. We are playing, oh, and I didn't find anything. Ah, crap. Okay, so for some reason it has um, gotten a new IP number. This is the activation app, 
uh, the shield, what do, what do they call it? I forget, shield something. And if we go in here and check the IP number, we can see that it has now gotten 192, 168, 118. It did not have that before, so somehow it got hold of my DHCP server. I'm a little bit curious of how it did that. Hmm. Okay, so nevertheless, we now have access to our XCC again, and we can go down and we can, can we see anything? Can we try and enable this? Mm. Apply what? Nothing shows up right away, but we could also try and set our, uh, let's see, it's in client mode and it has an ID. Let's give it my playhouse. That's ingenious. I uh, will give it some password. Okay, so I'm wrapping this up and I've already made this dirty. Um, yeah, it's a very secure server or I just can't figure it out. Um, I will, if I have to be completely honest here, I don't think this is very intuitive. It's, um, it's not logical. They move stuff around. You have to do something somewhere and some other things other where. I would uh, be very nice and say that this is a really awesome form factor, but the software is not very great yet. Driver for the Wi-Fi and the LTE thing. Well, there is no drivers, but, but it took me quite a while to find that they were hidden in the XCC, X-Clarity controller. Yeah. This is definitely a piece of advanced hardware and it's nothing that you should try and get for your home server. It's something that, well, it takes, it definitely takes a bit to set this up and, um, and mess around with this. I don't have forever and ever to play with this. And uh, so now I'm, 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 well, I put a label on it because the password in the XCC, well, you have to change that every 90 days and, uh, yeah, I didn't, I put in my good password and I don't want to have that sitting there and have to give that to errors. So I changed that to another password just so that, well, I didn't have to give my password. <sighs> Can I really scratch it? That would be awesome. <clears throat> the start price of this was not as high as I thought, but the learning curve is way steeper than I had expected. It is a bloody cool form factor. I'll put this back in the box and I'll give it back to Eros and I'll run into all sorts of trouble with Eros because I had to claim this server as my server just to be able to turn it on. So that's gonna give us a lot of fun, I'm sure. So thank you very much to Eros for lending this to me and thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.